Hello and welcome, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision Acupuncture. Today we're going to talk about a question that we've been getting quite a bit of over the last month or so, and that's the distinction between hyperbaric oxygen therapy and molecular hydrogen therapy. So today we're going to cover some of the basics on that, help you guys understand the distinctions between both of these therapies because they are something that we offer uh, at our clinic and something that we have patients doing. So as you guys know, we've been talking a lot about oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species, free radical damage over the last month. And we've also had a lot of conversations about hyperbaric therapy uh, that showed up in our feed. So we know both of these therapies can be very, very, very beneficial and useful for ophthalmic conditions and general health issues. Um, neurovascular issues, neurodegenerative issues, cognitive issues, um, developmental issues, a whole host of things that can really be beneficial. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT um, and molecular hydrogen therapy are two distinct therapeutic approaches that differ in mechanism of action. They're actually two polar opposites of the, of the uh, redox spectrum, and we're going to talk about that, what specifically that means. So here's a comparison of these two therapies. So we're going to start with the mechanism of action. So let's start with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT. So HBOT involves exposing the body to 100% pure oxygen that's higher than normal atmospheric pressure. Remember, normal atmospheric pressure is about 20%, has about 20% oxygen. When we go into uh, the hyperbaric oxygen mode, we get between 98 and 100% oxygen. We're also adding the pressure gradient, which is the compression chamber, uh, to that therapy, which increases the amount of oxygen dissolved into the blood. It actually turns the uh, plasma into a red blood cell to distribute oxygen to specific parts of the body, um, which then enhances oxygen delivery to the tissue and promotes tissue healing, uh, reduces inflammation, and just activates the mitochondria function, which is what helps the body, the body repair and regenerate. So HBOT is previously said is a mild oxidative therapy that increases free radical activity. Now this is normal just because we're increasing cellular metabolism. And again, we talked on earlier, uh, we had earlier discussions rather uh, about this, this effect that uh, HBOT is mildly uh, oxidative to the body, um, not to the point pushing you into oxidative stress, but the effect of, of um, creating more oxygen in the body does produce energy in a byproduct of that is reactive oxygen species. So in terms of mechanism, mechanism of action for hydrogen therapy, uh, hydrogen or H2, molecular H2 involves the administration, of course, of molecular hydrogen therapy in various forms, such as inhalation of hydrogen through gas, uh, in this case, you can do through through breathing, through nasal cannula, through uh, direct. Uh, in the case that we're doing in the clinic, we're using uh, our goggles to hydro add hydrogen to the eyes, to the eye tissue directly. Um, also, of course, drinking hydrogen-rich water is, is another thing that we've talked extensively about. And for that, we recommend the hydrogen tabs that we have, the H2 tabs that are available at our Eye Health Institute site, where you take two tabs, uh, drop them in water, wait for the... Uh, tabs to dissolve and then drink them, of course. So uh, there's those are the two main sources, inhalation, direct exposure to skin, um, and then drinking the water for sure. So molecular hydrogen acts as an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory agent, selectively scavenging harmful free radicals and reducing oxidative stress. <coughs> Excuse me, H2 is a reductive therapy and reduces free radicals. So again, on this redox scale, we have HBOT, which is more of a mild oxidative therapy, and H2, which is more of a reductive therapy or an antioxidant therapy. So that's the mechanism. So the mode of administration is going to be a little bit redundant, where we know HBOT, we have the chambers, it's typically administered in these specialized hyperbaric chambers where patients breathe in pure oxygen. Uh, in the mild HBOT, which are more the blow-up chambers, uh, there's increased pressure, usually uh, up to about 1.5 atmospheres, usually 1.3, 1.5 atmospheres of the soft chambers, and the body will um, 
usually do okay with that. Some concerns about that, of course, have been like cataracts and myopia, uh, other things that people struggle with sometimes are the ear pain. They get kind of like a little pain and uh, a lot of people get claustrophobic inside the chambers. So, um, so that, that can be a little bit of a thing for some people, but they're basically breathing in oxygen in the soft chambers. We have an oxygen concentrator that drives uh, oxygen. So you have the pressure gradient plus the pure oxygen. Now in the hard chambers that I usually don't recommend for eye issues, unless it's a major eye trauma or cancer or something like that, is the hard chambers. And the hard chambers uh, where you go in and you're basically in all cotton and the oxygen is actually pumped into the chamber itself. There's no masks, just all the oxygen is pumped in through oxygen tanks. So uh, that's a different therapy. Of course, there's like a flammability issue with that. You have a lot more higher uh, pressure in those chambers. They're about two to three atmospheres, which are two to three time normal atmosphere. So that's the mode of administration. Hydrogen therapy, of course, is administered through inhalation, drinking water, and using things like hydrogen saline solution or topical application. Certain medical applications, when we talk about the distinctions in medical applications for HBOT versus hydrogen therapy, now obviously no, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute. For, we know that there's ophthalmic applications for both, but let's hold off on that in dog ear that we'll get to that in a minute. So HBOT has been approved for several medical conditions, including decompression sickness, carbon monoxide poisoning, non-healing wounds, radiation injuries, and certain infections. Also has been very uh, helpful for uh, burn injuries and gangrene and crush injuries. Uh, it's also off-label conditions for TBI, traumatic brain injuries, uh, brain and eye stroke, and retinal and optic nerve degeneration. So that's HBOT. Hydrogen therapy, in terms of its metal, medical applications, uh, is still very new. Again, research hasn't started on hydrogen therapy since about 2007, when they first started the research in Japan uh, on rats for things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's in these neurodegenerative conditions. So hydrogen therapy is still uh, a really new area of research, and while it has shown promise in preclinical and early clinical studies, it hasn't gained a lot of widespread regulatory approval for specific medical con conditions when compared to hyperbaric. That said, it is uh, being investigated for and is showing a high degree of efficacy uh, for benefits like conditions like cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disorders, uh, both brain and eye, diabetes, weight loss, skin health, gastrointestinal disorders, and of course, ophthalmic issues that are both eye and brain related that affect the macula, the optic nerve, the choroid, uh, a lot of autoimmune optic issues or ophthalmic conditions seem to be really, really benefited by these conditions. Um, a lot of optic nerve issues, a lot of macular conditions, a lot of retinal conditions, and even brain issues or autoimmune conditions that are affecting vision. So, Again, it's been investigated for its potential benefits, um, and, and we're, we're still, uh, it's going to be a while for a lot of research to come out on that, but all of it's looking really good. So uh, research status is HBOT has been, um, has been studied, and there is a significant body of, of scientific evidence that supports it um, in terms of its safety as well. Hydrogen therapy, again, is really new. Um, while preliminary studies have shown results, uh, large-scale clinical studies have not quite been designed or developed yet, um, and we need to really establish the clinical efficacy for this. And the cool thing about H2, though, is that it's really, really safe. Um, there are no negative side effects that have been reported, and with HPOT, it's generally considered safe when performed by a trained practitioner. However, there can be some side effects such as ear or lung injury, um, which isn't very hot happen. People sometimes have reported there's uh, ear pain or burst in eardrum. Again, those are in the higher pressure chambers. Um, oxygen toxicity and, of course, claustrophobia can be an issue for some. Um, HBOT is super safe again and with minimal side effects. I, we haven't seen any. The only thing we've seen is a couple of patients who did, did uh, H2 therapy to inhalation late at night for more than like an hour or two. Um, it kind of gave them a lot of energy, so they had a little bit of an issue with falling asleep, and that was only like one or two patients that were kind of um, high energy to begin with. Um, molecular hydrogen is, again, is super safe. Um, it's non-toxic, there's no side effects, and there's no upper limit uh, of toxicity or, or max where people max out. 
Um, it is important to note that both therapies have their own unique applications and potential benefits. While HBOT has more established clinical applications, hydrogen therapy is still uh, ongoing and new, new therapy with promising preliminary results. For ophthalmic applications, they both show promise, right? So we know that, again, uh, they're both going to be used to benefit people with ophthalmic conditions. Again, where you look at people who are dealing with more inflammatory conditions, um, more oxidative stress, they're probably going to benefit a little bit more from hydrogen, molecular hydrogen therapy, uh, versus those that are dealing with more like uh, eye stroke or vascular dysregulation, where there's hypoxia to the tissue, meaning low oxygen to the retina, to the optic nerve, to the brain, uh, whatever situations that are causing hypoxia, of course, things like hyperbaric might be a little bit more beneficial. So again, they're both useful, but we need to know, uh, based on the underlying conditions, which uh, people are going to respond based on what conditions, what underlying factors that they have going on. So we also don't know, you know, some people are going to go in and try hyperbaric and do really well with that. And other people are just going to go in and use uh, molecular hydrogen therapy and respond really, really well through that. So um, the, what, the difference between, uh, Nick, you made a good question here, buddy. So the difference is, so hydrogen molecules are a little bit bigger than hydrogen, than, uh, I'm sorry, oxygen molecules are a little bit bigger than hydrogen molecules. The hydrogen molecules can go anywhere. Um, of course, oxygen crosses the blood retinal barrier as well. But again, oxygen um, and its unpaired electron is oxidative. So it needs to be neutralized. And we know that's what uh, hydrogen therapy does. So oxygen uh, creates a free radical sometimes. And we have this O negative, which is the, the free radical that causes um, you know, oxidative stress. And what hydrogen does is it links to that oxygen free radical and creates water, right? So water is good for our body. We like that. It's a lot more beneficial than free radicals. So they both do get through the, to the retina and, and the, the, uh, the optic nerve and the brain. They're very, very uh, pervasive and they just kind of, they're, they're light and they're, they're very small and they can pretty much get to anywhere in the body. That's why we like these, uh, this form of antioxidant therapy so much. So again, it's really going to depend on the case. And the other thing I wanted to mention is for those of you guys who are doing both therapies, um, remember one is a uh, smiled oxidant, which is HBOT, and the other one is a mild reductant or antioxidant. So we want to separate the two therapies for at least an hour between. And I usually recommend folks do uh, hyperbaric oxidative therapy first, and then an hour or more later, we're going to do hydrogen therapy if you're doing it on the same date. A lot of our patients are alternating days with that as well. So you can do both. You just want to, if you do hydrogen before hyperbaric therapy, it could cancel out all the free radicals uh, and the antioxidants that you just created in your body because it is oxidizing. So because of that, uh, in clinic, we're recommending patients do the uh, HBOT first, and then they do molecular hydrogen therapy after that. And the people who are just doing uh, molecular hydrogen don't have to worry about, just like the patients who are just doing uh, HBOT don't have to worry about it. So we're seeing amazing results already. We've had uh, hyperbaric uh, right now. We're doing this in uh, the time I'm doing this video is July 2023. Uh, we've been using hyperbaric for about three years now in clinic and seeing really, really good results. We've been using uh, elemental mo molecular hydrogen rather uh, therapy in clinic for about three to four months now. We're really seeing incredible results as well, uh, not just with ophthalmic conditions, but with other conditions as well. So we're really, really excited over the next six to 12 months to continue to gather data and research information based on our clinical trials and see what conditions and report back to you guys uh, in terms of what we see it to be most beneficial and most useful for. So keep in mind too, those of you guys who are going to be attending uh, treatment this summer in our clinic, uh, all of you folks who are receiving treatment this summer up until Labor Day are going to get the hydrogen therapy for no additional cost. It's gonna be free. Uh, part of our clinical study that we're doing this summer. And then if you guys are coming after Labor Day, um, those folks, uh, it's going to be an added on service. And again, it's, it's not an expensive therapy at all. Um, we'll talk more about that in another session. But next session uh, that we're going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit more about oxidation versus reduction, because now we're moving into, I brought up this idea of a reductive therapy. So I want you guys to really understand the difference between oxidation and reduction. So that's going to be our next session live here.
um, which will be recorded for you guys to, to play at your convenience on demand. So I am Dr. Andy Rosenfar. We're going to wrap this up here with AccuVision, where your vision is our mission. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.